Welcome to my channel, Shavers and Shavettes. I hope you are all well. Today, I have for you another in the series of Trash to Lather, the series where I take a look at shave soaps that I have found at local junk shops or flea markets, things like that, and just see how they perform. Usually only spend a dollar or two, and I enjoy doing it. First, as always, of course, the gear. Brush for today is a re-knotted hard right rainbow brush. I put a fan knot in this one and absolutely love it. The razor for today is from Mercure. It is their 15C and open comb. Kind of a reproduction of sorts of an old single ring from Gillette. Very nice, very gentle razor. If you've stayed away from open combs because you think they're all very aggressive, this is a great one for you. They can be aggressive or gentle, just like every other razor out there. And the star of the show in this beautiful plastic container is Spruce by Risley. I think it's pronounced with the exclamation point. I think you're supposed to yell it, but I'm not going to do that today. I don't know why they'd put it in there if they didn't want you yelling it. Very nice, very green soap. The pine cones on the top and the green color of the soap itself kind of give it away. It was originally a pine scented soap. My puck has no scent whatsoever remaining in it. Just a very old, very faint, very slightly musty scent of soap, which in the soaps that I've come across, that's how the majority of them are. So no big surprise there. In doing a little research in this, um, the bulk of reference to Spruce by Risley uh, was from kind of mid-1947 into early 1948. Um, as the name would imply, made by the Risley Soap Company. If that name sounds familiar, well, you've probably heard it before. That's why things sound familiar when you hear them again. Risley did make kind of their own branded soap, Risley Old Fashioned Shave Soap, which is pretty popular amongst collectors, and I have been lucky enough to find a couple of the wooden bowls completely full with soap, uh, so they will make an appearance on a future episode of Trash to Lather. In doing the research for Spruce, though, I found kind of interesting history on the Risley Company. They seem to have found themselves in some pretty bad legal issues kind of around the mid 40s with some copyright infringement or potential copyright infringement. I haven't made it through all of the resources that I found because it just didn't apply to this video, I didn't think. Uh, would I take a look at very specifically the Risley branded soap? I uh, hopefully will find a little more insight as to what happened there. The very first reference to spruce shave that I could find was 1938 and I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's a shaved soap, um, and I don't think it was made by a Risley. When I do my research, the first place that I look is to do a Google book search. Specifically, click on the link that says books, because they also include magazines, and lucky for us, old magazines as well. So a lot of the history of shave products, not just soap, but comes from advertisements. When did we see the first ad? When did it look like the product changed? When do we see the last ad? That's where a lot of our date estimates come from. So in the 1938 results, I was unable to find actual images. I think there were some copyright issues from what I could tell from the, from the Google result. Only one of the results included a little bit of information about brushless cream. So I'm assuming that is still reference to the spruce that was being advertised back then. So certainly not a soap, quite possibly not even by Risley. The bulk of the advertisements, or at least the results of the advertisements, were kind of mid-1947 to early 1948. Um, several results in Life magazine, which is kind of where a lot of shave advertisements come from. It's, it's pretty interesting how we can get so much from one magazine of, of our history. Um, I, this ad here, Teaching the Square, is about the current kid situation too. I absolutely love. The last reference to Spruce was in 1951 that I could find. Um, let me rephrase that. The last advertisement that I could find was in 1951. I did find a result 
that again I couldn't view the full page it was 1959 um, at the, and that was the year that Risley sold the company they were sold to Purex and I don't believe I'm gonna have to this is where the research for just the Risley old-fashioned soap is gonna come in but um, I don't think they produced soap under the Risley name after that um, getting into the soap itself though um, pretty nice it is a little bit, likes to be a little bit dry. It tends to be a little bit thin. Uh, it is a little bit sensitive to water, a little overly sensitive. Just the slightest bit too much water and the lather starts to break down. Now, that's okay in my book as long as the lubrication remains, as long as it keeps that very slick surface. and. Spruce sure does. Even if you add too much water and your lather completely fizzes out into nothing, it does keep a very, very slick layer over your face. And for my money, it works just as fine. You don't need a big fat layer of lather, even though it's fun to make and it looks nice. As long as the lubrication is there, you can get some good results. I was able to find, um, a little bit of a more uh, a review more in the day of this the the, uh, the spruce shave soap from consumer reports so in 1947 consumer reports had a review for the Risley shave soap I've got the transcript right here buckle in it's only two sentences long it says spruce shave soap one dollar pine odor strong but too harsh and too much like bath oil. Acquires soapy smell as soon as the top note is gone. And that's it. They move on to the next review. <laughs> so I guess 1947, it, maybe since shave soap was more of an everyday type of thing, uh, people didn't waste too much time writing reviews or reading reviews. So. Um, there you have it. They spoke to the scent. Apparently, it was too strong when it was made. There's no scent remind, remaining in my puck, uh, but it did have a pine smell. Uh, very interesting. There are a handful of pine soaps available today if that is something that you think sounds very nice. Overall, Risley, not a super top performer, not... Um, highly collectible as far as I'm aware. Part of that, I just don't think it, they made as much as their Risley branded soaps. Um, the pine, it may have been a more of a seasonal type of product. Um, when we see the ads, they kind of come out around Father's Day and Christmas. So they could have been made in much smaller batches as well. Uh, very unlikely in my mind that they were using the same formula, the same recipe as the Risley Lavender Old Fashioned. I, and I don't make soaps. Maybe the different scented oils have that big of an impact. Um, I don't know. If, if you know more about how much the scented oils of a soap can have an impact to the formula, please feel free to let us know in the comments. And yeah, I think that's about it as far as the soap is concerned. If you come across a bowl of spruce by Risley, should you pick it up? Well, I think if you are looking for performance first when we're talking about vintage soaps, I think you're going to be disappointed. Not that it's a poor performer, just want to make that clear, but it's not the type of performance that's going to make people actively seek it. If you're like me and the enjoyment from these old soaps is not just performance based, but having something in this case, very likely made in late 1948 or early 1951, that's something special to me. I have a lot of fun using soaps this old because at no point was the company under any delusions that the soap would last this long. It's soap by nature, it's a consumable item. It's meant to be used for a month or a couple months until it's gone and you replace it with a new one. So 
most of the enjoyment that I get when using these vintage soaps is just having that product so old and how much the world has changed, how much that soap would have seen if soap could soap can't see, but how much the world has changed into where we were when this soap was made and what's happening today. But at the end of the day, it's still a usable product. It has lasted this long. I'm going to guess performance is probably right on par with where it was if you were to have picked up your bowl of spruce by Risley, uh, original, back in the late 40s. In my experience, the age, I, I don't see any consistent impact with shave soaps that are that are old. Some are very nice, some are not very good, some are outright terrible, which is the exact range of what you would expect from a shave soap. If there were some sort of long-term impact that hits most soaps, I think we would see at least a definite preference to one side or the other, or a preference to being very bad soaps or a preference to be very good soaps. And it's very mixed. There are more good soaps than there are bad soaps because again, back at the back at the time that these were made, this was an everyday type of item. And there you have my thoughts on the Spruce by Risley. The first few episodes here of the series have been very obscure and even unknown soaps, and I think I'm ready to dive into something more popular. So if you would like to see a specific soap in the next episode, please let me know down below. I can't promise I'll be able to accommodate every request, but I've been pretty lucky. I should be able to handle most of the popular soaps uh, for my next one. So there we go. Thank you so much, as always, for spending some of your time with me today watching the video. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.